Hey everybody, what's good? Happy holidays to y'all. So, this is, I guess, the third update of my surgery. This is December 30th, um, the day before New Year's Eve. I wanted to talk to y'all about my update on the surgery, part three. Yeah, so, I wanted to let y'all know that I'm okay. I'm doing so much better now. I'm well educated on my surgery and on the medications that I'm taking. Um, it was so funny how people thought they knew what they, they thought they knew what they knew and they thought they knew how to treat me. When it comes to me, I'm not your average patient. I don't go to the same hospital for the same reasons that everybody else is going to. So if I'm coming to you with a medical problem and it's very severe, don't treat it as it's not so severe. Like you treat it lightly, like it's nothing to take serious because it is something to take serious. So as everybody know, I got the surgery done. I had a laparoscopic surgery. For those who don't know what a laparoscopic, laparoscopic surgery, I don't know how you pronounce it. It's when your stomach, the muscle of your stomach tears apart. They had to wrap your stomach around your esophagus and they had to, I guess, um, staple it together or put a mesh on it. And it takes about a month to heal. Yes, you will go through a lot of pains, a lot of burning, a lot of swelling. And what you don't know is that the most common things you basically use on a daily basis around your house is what, like, not around your house, but the most things you use as far as eating and drinking goes will be the main thing to cure your pains and your, your burning. So... When I'm talking about burning, I'm talking about in the esophagus area down to your diaphragm if you're a female. I was going through a lot of chest pains, a lot of burning in my diaphragm and my esophagus. I didn't know or understand why I was constantly feeling this burn. So whenever I eat something or drink something, my throat would feel like it's on fire and I was so scared to eat or drink anything that I didn't do anything for the next 24 hours. So I ended up going back to the hospital two more times throughout this week. So mind you, last week, Tuesday, I had the surgery done. I was in recovery until Wednesday, that same, the next day. Got up the hospital, came back into the hospital Christmas Eve on Thursday. And left the hospital again that same night and came back to the hospital Sunday morning. And I finally got home yesterday around Tuesday. Yesterday was Tuesday. Finally came home and I'm fully, I'm fine now. I'm fully fine now. I'm not fully healed yet. I have three more weeks to go. This is week two. Thank God the first week is over with. So week two, I hope everything gets a lot better. I'm able to eat some stuff now. So I, the first time I got to eat something nice soft was the pancakes, the oatmeal, the soups. And I finally ate some fish and I ate another pancake as today. So I was like, I was so happy because all this I couldn't eat last week. I could barely eat soup as it is. And then I started eating pudding, I started eating jello, I started drinking a lot of milkshakes, a lot of juices and stuff. And I realized that everything I was drinking and eating, I was able to hold down right. So that's another accomplishment that I'm happy about. Um, I told some people about my situation, about why I was in and out the hospital and what was going on with me. Only a small amount of people that I trust and know that could talk to me and be there for me when I need them to be. Um, I'm so happy I got a few people to have my back. That's like my safety net. Somebody that I could talk to whenever I need somebody to talk to. And it makes me feel a whole lot better. So I figure why not let y'all know out there what's going on with me. So if you've seen the last two, maybe three videos of my surgery situation, you know what I went through. You know how hard I, it was going, like how hard I had it. Like it was hard to make it through the first two or three days. 
but now things is starting to get a little more easier for me i'm starting to know how to treat the pain and the burning in my throat um i got the medications to coat my stomach and to prevent me from having any heartburn i got another medication for my pain and it's treating me pretty good and so far like i say i accomplished eating and drinking some stuff that i know i'm not supposed to have um because they think that if you start eating solids it's not gonna you're not gonna be able to take it it's gonna really hurt your stomach and your throat and it's not gonna your stomach is not gonna be able to take the whole thing so but i was eating fish i ate pancakes and I'm eating pudding and stuff. So it's like those things I'm happy to be able to do. And it didn't burn my stomach. It didn't burn my throat. I'm happy. So to let everybody know out there, yes, I'm doing okay. I'm fine. Like I say, thanks to my aunt and to the right doctors that took care of me. I was able to get through this entire week, you know, on a smooth note like they took care of the real problem we finally got down to the real problem and now we know how to treat the problem now i should be doing okay on my own and i'm okay the breathing is okay i'm able to breathe right now my chest is not feeling so heavy anymore um i have my as my asthma medication and another thing I wanted to let y'all know is that, you know, I'm feeling a little better. I'm able to sleep through the night. Before I couldn't sleep through the night, I was getting only one or two hours of sleep and I kept waking up. But now I'm sleeping through the night. Um, I'm get, I'm going back to sleeping to five or six hours now. That's better than two hours. I'm okay. I'm really, like I say, it's like, thank God I came out of there alive and well. Thank God that the surgery went just fine. The doctor, he, he did an okay job. You know, um, everything was fine. Like I say, thanks to the doctors in there that, that wants to do their job, they did their job. They spoke to me about everything. They educated me on about the surgery and about the side effects and everything that I was going to go through instead of rushing me out the hospital like the other doctors did. Because one thing I don't understand is if you're going to try to treat the problem, treat the problem. Don't just shove pills down somebody's throat. Take their blood and then send them on their way home and talk about, oh, you're okay. No, it doesn't work like that. And no, the patient is not okay. Because if we was okay, we wouldn't need to come back to the hospital two or three times in one week. Like, don't you think there's something wrong with that? If you keep seeing the same patient over and over throughout that week or throughout the month, and you're sitting here wondering why this person keeps coming back. Only reason why we keep coming back to the hospital over and over and over is because you did not treat the patient right. You didn't treat the problem we have a severe problem on our hands and unless you don't know much about the situation unless you don't know much about it you need to give that your your job to somebody that knows a lot about it because you could tell who's very educated on situations like this and who's not and people just take the easy route as to uh, assume the problem shove pills down their throat and send the patient on their way home no, if you don't know how to treat the problem, just say you're not fully educated on it and you'll give me to somebody else that knows how to treat the problem, who specialize in things like this. And I had to speak to four different doctors to treat this problem. And long story short, now that we finally found the right doctors who specialize in things like this with the stomach area and the throat area, it's like we finally found things that we can do to treat the problem. They gave me the right things to do. And come to find out, it's like the milkshakes or any milk-based products treats the burning of your stomach and throat. And now that I'm fully aware of everything and fully educated on everything, now I can do things back at home. So that's just my thing. That was just my thing because I hate having to keep going back to the hospital for the same thing. 
and it really bothered me. So if you think the daughters was like kind of bothered, I was bothered as well because I felt like I keep coming home feeling worse than I did when I went to the hospital and I don't feel like my problems was really solved. So like I said, long story short, they finally found the right things to give me to treat the problem and now I'm home. I'm recovering very well. I'm in my bed for like maybe an hour or two and then I'm out of my bed. I'm walking around my house getting some exercise in and every now and then I take a, a little walk outside for like five minutes. I'm not doing that much of a walk and then I come back home. The doctor say as long as I get to, if I could walk around, do it because it helps with my breathing. It helps with the pains in my chest and my back because if you stay in the bed too long, you like you would have more problems then than you do before. I don't want to have any more breathing problems. So that's why I'm walking around my house. I'm taking it easy. The excisions is a lot better. Um, my stomach is still have the bandages on it, but it's clearing up. It's looking a lot better. Um, everything else is fine. I'm fine. Like I say, my sh I'm getting my strength back. You know. Like I say, I'm so happy that I got to talk to my aunt about it and I got to get help from her because she been through the same thing. So she's a little more educated than I am, but I'm okay. Yeah. So I want everybody to have a great new year's happy new year's happy holidays and let's rock out this new year's the way we're supposed to. Let's get rid of 2020 and come in fresh, clean and everything ready to get everything started so i will see y'all after new year's and hopefully things will be much better wish me luck keep praying for me